my white skin should not be a shield when others could potentially mean a death penalty. This need to change. We need to shine light on systemic racism because it's here. White privilege is your skin colour being a key that opens doors for you in life without you even realising it. But once you recognise that privilege, you can use your key to unlock doors for those without it. And that is what being an ally is. Do I have a racist past? Yes. All of us who grew up in a racist society have a racist past, and much of it is subconscious. We've just learned that a former soccer player at Virginia Tech has scored a major win for free speech, her own. Kirsten Henning says that in September of 2020, after she refused to kneel with her teammates in support of BLM, she was benched. Then, she says, the coach berated her in front of her teammates and subsequently removed her from the starting lineup for the next two games. At that point, Henning quit and took her case to court, arguing that the coach violated her First Amendment rights. Well, this week, she got satisfaction when the coach agreed to a settlement. Kirsten joins me now. Kirsten, uh, this was wild. I know there was something called a, was it a unity pledge that was, was, was announced uh, across the stands that w that was supposed to compel you to kneel and you didn't? Yes, ma'am. Uh, there was a unity statement that was read at the beginning of ACC games uh, in the beginning of the 2020 season. Now, why did you object to that? Personally, I, I didn't felt, feel like I needed to kneel in uh, order to support something. Uh, personally, I felt like I could stand and, and, and be in, in support of something. Um, personally, I think that the kneeling was very synonymous with um, the Colin Kaepernick movement and, and BLM movement, and uh, I didn't feel like I, I needed to. Now, the pushback that you received was significant, because as someone who played sports, you know, for many, many years, and my coaches were so important to me, to be berated for not complying in front of your teammates, how did that feel? Uh, it didn't feel good. Um, you know, I'm, I'm someone I kind of, I, I do my job, and, um, you know, I was there for the love of the game and the love of the school, and uh, to me, that, that's, putting on that jersey meant so much to me. Um, and, and to be called out like that, um, it was pretty harsh. Well, and I love Virginia Tech. It's a fantastic school. It's very difficult to get into now, I understand. Um, but your former coach just put out a statement, which read in part, Kirsten, I'm pleased the case against me has been closed and I am free to move forward clear of any wrongdoing. It's been difficult not being able to tell my side of the story. The people I care about, whose opinions matter to me, know the truth. They know my coaching decisions are based purely on getting our team in a position to win. Now, implicit in that statement, Kirsten, is that you were not good enough to play in a starting position on your team. Is that accurate? I don't think that's accurate, no. Um, I think that the numbers speak for themselves um, in, in that sense. I think uh, Judge Cullen, who, who ruled on the summary judgment, um, summarized it perfectly. I think I averaged 74 minutes my freshman year and 88 minutes my sophomore year. So um, there was definitely a, a significant decrease in, in playing time with no real explanation as to why. Well, uh, there, there was enormous, again, pressure brought to bear on all athletes and even high school students, uh, because I heard from a lot of them that if you didn't post a particular message in support of BLM or George Floyd, that you got in trouble with your friend groups and maybe higher ups in your school, whether they be counselors you need a recommendation from. Uh, so there was a lot of pressure just brought to bear on all students. And a lot of people didn't have the courage to kind of stand up and say, I kneel before God and no one else, correct? Correct. Yes. I think, you know, it's, un it's unfortunate the political climate that was made in college sports and not even college sports, but just everywhere, um, you know, putting this pressure on athletes who personally, I don't believe in 
politics having any place in sports. And so when that pressure came in to conform to the mob mentality is, is what it's referred to nowadays, it was, it was hard, um, you know, because that environment was very suffocating, it was toxic, and it was very divisive what they did. And um, it, it's unfortunate that people are still having, having to go through that. And I hope in what I'm doing, I can inspire those people to, to stand up for what they believe in. Well, Kirsten, I'm thrilled that you reached a settlement. I'm thrilled that you're moving on with your life. And thank you for standing up for your right to free speech. More uh, students of your age and former students, uh, I think, should take note. Kirsten, thank you.